as ever. Now, how far can you get on nothing more than the kindness of strangers? Uh, Scottish model Elaine Harris is about to find out. Mm -hmm. She is giving herself 10 days uh, credit card free, uh, no accommodation, transport or food plan to see where she can get to. She is raising funds for her charity as she goes. Uh, good morning to you, Elaine. Good morning. Good morning. So... When you say you're going to see how far you can get, do you yeah. mean like physically, geographically, how far can I get away from home? Yes. 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 I haven't made any set plans. It's basically to see who I meet, who gets involved, the powers of Facebook, the goodwill of people and to see where I go from there. And have you made any plans at all? I mean, no. contacts even? <laughs> not yet. Um, I literally set the date last night, which is going to be the 21st of July, so it's right. not long to go. It's been posted on the charity Facebook page and my own Facebook and um, really just trying to get the word out there so that people can help me. So what, are you going to just walk out the door and keep walking? Um, well, hopefully I will manage to get some sort of lift to start off with to get me going. I, I don't want to be hitching for 10 days trying to get out Dundee. No, no, well, yes, that's true. You started from, from Brody Ferry. Um, but you, this is the kind of thing that you must have laid in bed at night and thought, right, how is this going to go? Um, what have you been visualising? So what really happened was I um, came up, uh, the clinic's run once before, and to raise money I cycled from John O'Groats to Land's End with no experience, going the wrong way, against the headwind. And it really was the goodwill of people that helped me get along. I mean, there was one situation where I'd come off the bike, I was battered emotionally and physically, Physically, and this truck stop took me in and the owner of the truck stop was spraying arthritis spray into my calf muscles while the lady who ran the place was holding my hand, giving me a pep talk. And it was really those situations that I remember that kept me going. So when I was thinking about what can I do that's going to get people involved, that's completely different and it's going to make a lot of money for a good cause, this was kind of like a light bulb moment while I was driving along. This will solely just rely on the goodwill of people. Yeah. And they've also got to feed me and put me up as well. <laughs> so you're looking for bed, board, bed, a bit of transport? Board, yeah. I'm taking a GPS tracker with me, all my clothes. I'm going to have 10 protein bars just in case no one feeds me. And, um, yeah, and a, a lot of hope. Lot of hope. <laughs> so, so tell us about the, the charity that you're doing this for. So I used to live out in the Cape Verde Islands and um, I moved back seven years ago and went backwards and forwards with my eldest daughter. So it started off just taking out essential runs um, for the charities out there. But I wanted to do more. So I found out that the that a lot of the children can't access dental or optical treatment with the local wage being 200 euros and a dental appointment being 50 euros without any treatment it's just not feasibly possible for so many children so that's how this clinic was born um the cape verde dental and optical clinic um and yes so i managed to raise enough last year and it carried out almost forty thousand euros of free treatment for vulnerable kids. So wow. uh, this time round, I'm hoping to do a lot more. There's a couple of charities that are in the town, um, Castel de Sal, Nos Casa, that I want to help. But I want to raise even more money as there's a slum um, in Terraboa. And this wonderful woman, Anne, um, helps out almost 200 children there. So I want to be able to take dentist opticians not only to work in the town, but to go off-site onto the actual slum to help as many as possible. So what sort of procedures do the children need? Um, basically... The, the problem is is that there's been a lot of influx of tourists over the last 10 years. and they're bringing where the Cape Verde <laughs> Islands even are. Right. So they've become a holiday hotspot. They're about an hour and a half's flight south of the Canaries and just off the coast of Senegal. So a lot of the tourists are also bringing in suites with them and with the children not having access to um, dental treatment, it's becoming ah. an even added on problem to what was already there. Um, but the children are needing everything, Do you know, a lot... We went out and not only did extractions last time, but we also did fillings and fissure sealings. We had um, um, uh, fluoride treatment and also uh, education about how to clean teeth, just really basic stuff. So we plan to do all that um, along with an optician. Um, yeah. So And you lived there goals. for seven years? <laughs> Uh, I lived out there for five years, yeah. Well, what took you there? I ended up, I got a job that took me out there, but I didn't like the job. And I left the job, but it took me to the island and I fell in love with the place. So that was it. And I stayed there. I loved the people. I loved the way of life. I came back to have my daughter and then go backwards and forwards on holiday. But now this has become, um, yeah, a bigger thing. And we fly backwards and forwards now for the clinic. 
Oh, right. With okay. the next so one being November. You've got that ongoing connection Yeah, now. so the next clinic is in November the 11th and I'm hoping to run, last time it only ran for two weeks, I'm hoping to run it for six weeks this time. So a lot bigger scale and I'm really looking for anybody at all who can get involved and help in any way. Um, I've got a Just Giving page which is called Keep a Lane Moving mm-hmm. and uh, the Facebook page where you can track it all is Cape Verde Clinic on Facebook. But really anybody who can help with a bed, who can help with food, who can help with transport, but also also, um, if there's any dentists or opticians out there that would like to come across and help, or if they um, can donate dental materials or lenses, frames, basically I'm doing all of this on my own. Uh, so far, I've got a company called Allied Vehicles who are doing a dress down day on Friday, and a fab company charity called Dentaid who um, are lending me all the equipment. But apart from that, it's me. <laughs> wow, it's a huge undertaking. And yeah. presumably, so every year there's a big obligation on you to, to raise a considerable amount of yeah. funds. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of this, yes. do you, you've given yourself 10 days, ten, is that right? I've given myself 10 days to get to wherever I'm going to get to. I'm just hoping I get out. Dundee and past the first pub. <laughs> I mean, are you taking your passport with you? I'm taking my passport. I'm going to take a sleeping bag just to be on the safe side. I'm going to take £100 of complete emergencies just to be on the safe side. Yeah, and I'll have leaflets as I go, handing them out. And uh, the powers of Facebook, I think I had about 10,000 people following me for my cycling journey. So I'm hoping that this will grow and grow um, and I'll have even more following me for this. And uh, What does your family make of this? Um, well, they know what I'm like, so it's quite expected. <laughs> <laughs> well, there she goes again. I think they were just glad I wasn't going to try and swim the English Channel, so I think everybody was quite happy with this one. Yeah. That's next year. Yeah, maybe, yeah. 18-month waiting list, apparently. <laughs> is there really? I, I've only looked into it very slightly, but I believe there is a waiting list. Oh, right, yeah. OK. Well, I was looking for an excuse not to do it. <laughs> I've got it there. Um, well, very best of luck, and I hope the weather sticks for you, apart no, from everything else. I mean, you. do you know what direction you're going to head in first? Um, no, not really. Well, hopefully south and um, head that way. But I want to kind of keep it open to see what happens. But if anybody can donate, even last year, a £10 donation became €150 Euros worth of treatment because everybody gives their time for free. So a little bit really does help. Mm. Well, um, the very best of luck to you, Elaine. Thank you very much. Thank for you for having me on. Telling us all about it. There you go. See how far Elaine can get in 10 days on nothing more than the kindness of strangers.